Insects can be a nuisance in the garden, but they play an important role in the ecosystem. They provide food for birds, they help pollinate our gardens, and they help break down organic matter into nutritious soil that our plants can use. So when you use a pesticide, no matter how organic it claims to be, you are still affecting the ecosystem. So I'm gonna show you some ways that you can control pests without using any pesticides. Hi, I'm Christina with Forever Food Forest, a channel where we explore ways of growing food without the use of pesticides, herbicides, or commercial fertilizers. And instead we rely on creating symbiotic ecosystems that are good for the garden and good for the planet. Let's get into it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I keep pests under control in my garden naturally. First rule of pest-free plants is happy and healthy plants. And right behind me is my number one secret for happy and healthy plants, and that is a compost pile. Compost is an excellent soil amendment and it works over time at keeping your plants happy and thriving. In my personal gardening, I found that whenever I lay a top layer of about an one inch of compost, magically the pests stay away from those plants. Now I'm gonna get really scientific here, so I want you to stay with me because I'm going to explain how. You see, when plants are stressed, they attract pests. Over fertilization and excess of fertilizer is one such source of stress. What happens is as plants take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water, they synthesize that into carbohydrates and then those carbohydrates with the aid of nitrogen, either from the soil or through foliar feeding, is converted into amino acids and essentially protein, like plant protein, right? When there is an imbalance of minerals in the soil or watering issues or pH issues, plants become stressed because they're not able to synthesize these molecules properly. And the result is a stressed plant with excess sugar and excess nitrogen. The plant is not gonna look anemic or sickly. Instead, it'll look really green and lush, like excessively green. Basically, your plants get fat. And to an aphid, that sickly plant looks like a slice of cake and a sea of kale. Excess nitrogen is a magnet for aphids. They feed off of it, have lots of babies, and then create an infestation that sucks the life out of your plants. Did you know that plants have natural defenses that make them taste terrible to insects? Nitrogen is responsible for the green growth in plants. But the problem is when there's too much nitrogen, the plant puts all of its energy towards growing and putting out green growth and it neglects its natural defenses. Compost rich in decomposed organic matter provides plants with all the nutrients they need to boost their natural defenses. Healthy plants are rarely attacked by pests because their natural immune system makes them indigestible to insects. The difference between compost and synthetic fertilizers is like the difference between eating whole organic foods and a diet consisting of only multivitamins. Soil that contains compost is full of beneficial fungi and fungi help keep plants healthy by outcompeting disease-causing organisms and by creating symbiotic relationship with plant roots. So what happens is the fungus or fungi through their massive mycelium network tap into the roots of the plants and because of this massive network, they can get nutrients and water where water is not readily available for the plants. So they can transport the water to the plant and in exchange, the plant provides them with sugars. And if you think about it, it's in the best interest of the fungus to keep plants happy and healthy because they provide them with sugars. Now, what I'm about to say may sound like science fiction. Plants can talk to each other. Yep. The mycelium is like the internet of the soil and all the plants are connected to the network and they use it to communicate with each other and to share resources. So if one plant gets attacked by caterpillars, that information is sent to all the plants in the network along with the resources needed to boost up their immune system and fight off the attack. Isn't that cool? And that's why I am huge into practicing permaculture and the no dig method, because when you disturb the soil, you're also disturbing that natural 
mycelium network. You might be thinking to yourself, I want to grow food now. I don't have time to wait until my compost is finished. So here are some other ways to keep pests off your plants. Let's talk about trap crops. Trap crops are another resource you can grow to keep pests from destroying your garden. Trap crops are sacrificial plants that you grow with the intention of attracting insects and once they get infested you remove the plant and the pests along with it. Examples of trap crops are nasturtiums. They're a cool season flower that is excellent at attracting attracting aphids. Uh, you can grow it in borders or going up a trellis because it is a vining plant and the flowers and the leaves are also edible so you can make a really delicious garnish or a pesto. Another example of a trap crop is calendula. Calendula is literally nature's sticky trap. Uh, the stems of this medicinal herb are covered in a sticky resin and when pests sit in that re resin they get stuck and can't leave so they can't spread to your other plants. I plant calendula along borders as a ground cover and in between my tomatoes and my strawberries. Radishes are excellent at attracting all kinds of pests. They are pest magnets and farmers have been using them for centuries as sacrificial trap crops. I plant radishes to save my broccoli. Right here I have my broccoli that I'm going to eat and back there I have my trap crop of radishes that are completely infested. And check this out, the broccoli is amazingly pest free and I did add a little bit of compost before I planted it so that might have something to do with the health of this broccoli. However, our temperatures have been in the 90s. It's practically summer here and broccoli is a cool weather crop so the fact that it's doing so well is a testament that compost and trap crops really do work. I'm utterly disturbed by the amount of aphids on this. They're shedding that is oh that's disgusting. We're gonna compost these. Ladybugs are a natural aphid predator. They love aphids. They just go nom 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 nom. It's like a buffet for them. Predatory insects are insects that feed on other insects and they don't harm your plants. One example is ladybugs. Ladybugs eat aphids. Uh, so wherever you see aphids just keep an eye out because you might see some ladybugs. Oh there's a ladybug here. You can also order ladybugs online and release them in your garden but if you don't have a food source for them, they will leave. So what I like to do is get them for free through Mother Nature by growing plants that attract ladybugs naturally. And some of those plants are herbs such as dill, cilantro, and parsley. So if you want to attract beneficial insects that are going to do the pest control for you, make sure to grow dill, parsley, and cilantro in your garden, as well as basil. Basil has other benefits it uh, repels a lot of pests. So growing a combination of herbs and attracting beneficial insects and using compost will help minimize pests in your garden. But what do you do about large insects like caterpillars and grasshoppers? Well, you attract their natural predators, birds. So how do you attract birds to your garden? Grow berries and seeds that birds can eat. Plant shrubs where birds can hide. Provide them with a source of clean water. Birds are some of nature's most voracious predators and by attracting them to our garden, they are going to do all the work for us. If you live in the Southeast, you're probably familiar with these little guys. They're anoles and they're awesome. They are a gardener's friend and an important part of the ecosystem here in Florida because if there's one thing that we're famous for, other than their beaches and theme parks, it's our insects. And these little guys love to eat the insects. So if you have them around, they're a good thing to have. And if you have too many of them, don't worry. Owls are their natural predators and they will eat them. And then you'll have owls. Although pests can be a nuisance, they are an important part of the ecosystem. Insects provide food for birds as well as other animals. And by using pesticides, you are essentially getting rid of these uh, insects indiscriminately. So you're not only getting rid of the pests, you are also getting rid of the beneficial insects and insects that provide food uh, for 
maybe some rare and endangered species and thus causing irreparable damage to the ecosystem. So what I wanna do is I wanna encourage you to try growing food without using pesticides. And let me know how it goes in the comments below. And remember, the whole idea behind permaculture gardening is to create a symbiotic ecosystem where plants, animals, and insects live in balance. Hopefully this was informative. If you have any questions or suggestions for a video, drop them in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about permaculture gardening, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And now let's roll the bloopers reel of me getting eaten by bugs while trying to make this video. Until next time, f off bugs. If you have an idea for a topic or something that you want to learn more about, and normally, oh my God, they're crawling all over me. The f is that? Fucking cicadas. I'm covered in catnip. And that's going to protect me from all the bugs that are out today.